everyone. Today we're going to talk about internal flow. First, let's see what is the learning objective for today's lecture. We are going to compare laminar and turbulent flow and learn about Darcy equation and Raynaud's number. So the objective of today's lecture is solve real pipe system problem using Darcy equation for laminar pipe flow. Later on in next lecture, we're going to discuss how to find, um, how to design piping system for turbulent pipe flow. The second objective of today's lecture is characterize flow as laminar, transitional, or turbulent flow. At the, at the beginning of this class, we learn about fluid, fluid classification, but in this lecture, we identify different type of flow as laminar, transitional, and uh, turbulent flow. Then we, we are going to calculate the velocity profile for laminar flow. And after that, we are going to talk about important number in fluid mechanics, which is Reynolds number. Let's talk about today's outline. First, we discuss what is laminar flow versus turbulent flow. Then we talk about Reynolds number and Darcy equation. Why we need Reynolds number and Darcy equation? Because we're going to find head loss or loss of energy. As always, we solve some example to uh, apply what we learned today. Let's start with definition of laminar and turbulent flow. Laminar flow is the flow when all particles follows a smooth path and never Interface, interfere with one another. Turbulent is opposite one, characterized by irregular movement of particle of the fluid pool regions. So can you think of uh, any examples? You might see this uh, chimney in front of Otsman Hall. Especially in winter, you can see turbulent flow at here, right? This is a turbulent flow that you can see. Also, if you have a candle, you can see the first part of the candle, it's very regular flow pass, and we call it laminar flow. In the second part, it might be turbulent flow. Let's give more example of laminar and turbulent flow. When you see wind is coming, it's usually it's a laminar flow until it, it hits something like a tree or your house, then it turns out to turbulent flow. Another example is your kitchen sink. This part is laminar flow and this place is turbulent flow. Another example is the river. You can recognize when you really have turbulent flow. As an engineer, we need, well, we need something that we can tell which flow is laminar or turbulent. We cannot just see and take a look and say, is it laminar or turbulent? Osborne Reynolds, born in uh, 1842, is innovator in an understanding of fluid mechanics. He was a shipbuilder builder and designed sewers as an engineer. Later on, became interested in flow around and through objects. He has a lot of experiment in head loss and flow by constructing an apparatus to investigate laminar and turbulent flow. So we are going to know how Reynolds, uh, you know, find the equation to distinguish between laminar, turbulent, and transitional flow. Here is a video if you are interested in the history of Reynolds number. All right, let's just 
visually see how we can see the Reynolds number in the lab. So the first picture is laminar flow. So if we inject, if we inject ink, inject ink in a glass tube, we can see how flow will change. Here is a laminar flow. The second picture is a turbulent flow. So you can see the path is not regular and we call it a uh, turbulent flow. All right, so Reynolds is uh, found out if the Reynolds number that we're going to talk about, what is Reynolds number? If it's smaller than 2300, we have laminar flow. And if it's between 2300 and 4000, it's transitional flow. If Reynolds number is greater than 4,000, it's turbulent flow. All these things that we discussed is related to internal flow, not external flow. In external flow, we have different criteria to say either it's laminar, transitional, or turbulent. Do you remember uh, what we discussed about most of civil engineering uh, fluid classification? Is it laminar, transitional, or turbulent? Yes, most of application in civil engineering are either turbulent flow or sometimes transitional. So let's see what's the uh, Reynolds number formula. So here is the Reynolds number. Reynolds number, it depends on the density of the fluid, velocity of the fluid, diameter, and also absolute viscosity. We know absolute viscosity and kinetic viscosity are related to each other. So, but not all the time we're working with the circular pipe, right? Sometimes we have rectangular pipe, but we still use this equation and we have this diameter. We, we have another diameter in fluid mechanics that we call it hydraulic diameter. Let's see what is the hydraulic diameter that we use for Reynolds number. So hydraulic diameter or D subs of H is four times of, uh, four times of area over perimeter. So, Hydraulic, diam hydraulic diameter is four times of area over perimeter. So you, you have a table in your textbook that you can see all the hydraulic diameter. For example, for a circular one, the hydraulic diameter and actual diameter are the same. For a square duct, the hydraulic diameter is the same as just one side or here is for rectangular duct. So we use circular or rectangular pipe for different purposes. Usually when we are involved with fluid, we usually use circular pipe in civil engineering. But for heating, cooling system of building where the pressure difference is relatively small, the manufacturing and installation costs is lower if we use rectangular. All right, let's just graph um, head loss versus velocity and see what, um, how Reynolds number and head loss are related to each other. So in this graph, you can see velocity in the x-axis and head loss. As you increase velocity, you have higher head loss. How it change fluid classification? So you have laminar, then it turned to transitional, then turbulent. All right, it's related, it's not only related to velocity, it's also diff, uh, related to viscosity and diameter of the pipe. Also, the roughness, of pipe is also important. N 
stands for pipe roughness. Pipe roughness is given in the table in your textbook. So for, for example, for a smooth pipe, the roughness is 1.75. For rough pipe, The roughness coefficient is 2. So you can see the higher velocity is, the higher the higher Reynolds number is, and then we have more head loss, more energy loss. Now let's see the relationship between hydraulic radius and also hydraulic diameter. Hydraulic radius is just A over P. The hydraulic diameter is 4A over P. But you need to be careful about this perimeter. This perimeter is weighted perimeter. What does it mean? Sometimes in civil engineering we have a pipe but it's not fully, it's not full and we have just a specific area that is wet. So this is a wetted area that I highlighted with red. So this one is wetted area, wetted perimeter. Or this area, is wetted area that for open channel we use wetted area so make sure when you calculate hydraulic radius make sure you are aware of how much fluid you have and if you need to use wetted perimeter make sure you do so all right let's see the pressure profile Let's see the velocity profile, excuse me. So here is a velocity that is developed in a pipe. So you can see here, it's a start like this, then it's going to develop and then it's fully developed velocity profile. The maximum velocity is right here, but we always use average velocity. But make sure at the beginning of the pipe, there is a region that there, there, it has a lot of shear stress that we don't use the velocity profile. We just wait until it's fully developed. And here is turbulent flow. You can see you have some layer here that it's not zero, but we have some velocity here. We call it buffer layer. All right, let's see how we can, and here is for laminar flow. So you can compare how laminar flow is different than turbulent flow. Here is the graph that show the shear stress versus the length of the pipe. So at the beginning of the entrance, we have a large shear stress, whereas when we keep going, we have lower shear stress and then it's constant. This is the reason that at the beginning, the velocity profile is not developed. It's because of these shear stress. For laminar flow, we can find the average velocity from this equation. So this is the velocity profile for any given point at radius of R. And here is the maximum velocity that is always two times as average velocity. Let's look at 
two important equation in fluid mechanics that we work on this equation the rest of the semester. First is the friction factor coefficient. F is F is friction factor coefficient. So friction factor coefficient. For laminar flow, it's 64 over Reynolds number. So it's really easy to find friction factor. It's just 64 and we need to calculate Reynolds number. We know what is Reynolds number. The other important equation is pressure losses. When we have a turbulent flow or laminar flow, we have some pressure drop from one point for example, point 0.1 to point 0.2. If you want to know what's a pressure loss, we can use this equation. The other important thing is how much head loss we have. So do you remember Bernoulli's equation? That was a term that called head loss. Here is how we calculate head loss in an internal flow. So it depends on coefficient, um, friction factor, so it depends on friction factor, length of the pipe, diameter of the pipe, and velocity, and g is correct. So let's see how we can apply this equation. Before that, so we know we have laminar or transitional or turbulent flow. There is some pressure loss that we can find it from this equation. And then we can find the head loss. When we have a head loss, we usually use a pump to add more energy. Let's see what is the equation for a pump. So equation for a pump, usually I show power for pump with P subs of P, which is power of the pump. All right, which is flow. So let me use another color. So Q is flow rate. You are familiar with, with flow rate. And delta P is a drop in pressure or difference in pressure from point one to point two. All right. At this point, we are going to solve an example together and apply what we learned so far. Okay, so here is the problem. First, let's see what is given and what we need to find. Let's read the problem first. Water at 40 degree Fahrenheit. So when the temperature is given, it means we can look up, look up the density and viscosity from back of our textbook. So the density, the density is given and also the viscosity. Just make sure you are aware the density is pound mass per cubic feet. Is flowing through a 0.12 inch or equivalent of feet diameter. So the diameter is given, so I'm going to write it down. The density is given, the viscosity is given, the diameter is also given. 30 feet long horizontal pipe. So the length is also is given. Pipe is steadily at an average velocity of three feet per second. So velocity is given. Determine the head loss. So what we need to find is first of all, what is head loss? Second, what is the pressure drop delta P? And 
what else what is the flow rate and power for pump so this is four things we need to find let's see how we can solve this problem now pause the video and using the equation that you have for uh, for this lecture first is Reynolds number how to use the Reynolds number just make sure you have just make sure for Reynolds number let me change the color for Reynolds number the only things that you need is density velocity diameter and absolute viscosity right so if you find then a Reynolds number you can tell what type of flow you have is it laminar turbulent or um, or transitional after you have Reynolds number for now we just know laminar flow you can find friction factor which is 64 over Reynolds number once you have friction factor you can use Darcy equation what's a Darcy equation is head loss equals friction factor length over d v squared over 2g once we have a head loss we just learned this the equation about dropping pressure so dropping pressure is friction factor length over d over rho velocity square over 2 2 after that what is the next step you can find the find the power for pump because the velocity is given we can find flow rate right flow is velocity multiply area the diameter is given so we can find the flow rate for power of the power for pump is just flow multiply the pressure drop all right now you can pause the video and use this equation and solve this problem All right. The first step is to write Reynolds number and find out what type of flow we have. It's rho V D over mu. Let me change the color. And here is Reynolds number. It's sixty-two point sixty-four pound mass per feet cubic what is velocity is three feet per second right and what is the diameter is 0 0.01 feet per second what is the viscosity it's already given it's 1.38 and to the power of negative three it's pound mass feet per second if you look at the units all of them are pound mass they cancel out so we don't have to be worried Reynolds number is unitless so there is no unit so let's see what is the Reynolds number Reynolds number use the calculator is 18.3 so it's a smaller than 2300 what does it mean it means it's laminar flow all right well it's laminar flow we can find the friction factor from this equation friction factor is 64 over Reynolds number right now I can 
find the Reynolds number. So Reynolds number is 64 over 1803, which is point, um, sorry, reaction factor. Here is friction factor, which is 0 0.0355. Friction factor is usually is a small number. All right, now the next step is using Darcy equation. Using Darcy equation, which is for head loss. It's a very famous equation that we use the rest of the semester frequently. Multiply V squared over 2G. So let's find out what is head loss. So head loss is friction factor that again, it's unitless. Friction factor doesn't have any unit. Multiply length which is three feet over uh, the, the diameter is 0 0.01 feet. Velocity is three feet per second. Make sure you square it over two. What is the gravity in British system? It's 32.2 feet per second all right per second squared now we can find head loss head loss is 14.8 and the unit is feet all right so far we found the head loss was part a now this is part a of the problem now we're going to find out what is the pressure drop and then find the pump that is suited for this piping system. Okay, the next step is to find pressure drop. Pressure drop is F length over diameter rho V squared over two. Right, so we have everything we need at this point. So let's calculate the head loss, the pressure drop. So it's 0 0.0355 is a friction factor. 30 feet over 0 0.01 feet. Multiply the density of water in British system is 62.64. And it's pound mass per feet squared. Multiply velocity, which is three feet per second squared over two. Now we have this pound mass here. We need to convert it so we need to multiply it by multiply by one pound force is 32.2 pound force feet per square second. So this is only for conversion. Okay, so this is for conversion. Oops. Thirty two. Point two pound feet. Okay. Now the pressure drop is 929 pound force per square feet. Okay. 
So we found out what is the pressure drop in pound per square feet. If you want to change it to PSI, we can say this is 929 divided by 144, which is 6.45 PSI or pound force squared inch. But we need a pump to help the system to overcome the head loss and pressure difference. So this is part B. We need to find what is the flow rate to find out what pump, what type of pump we need. So Q is VA and which is three feet per second, multiply uh, the area, which is pi radius squared, a squared or diameter squared over four. So the flow rate, you know, flow rate is usually the small number, it's 0 0.000, two three six pound uh, feet squared feet cubic per second so here is the flow rate now i can find find the power for pump, which is Q delta P L. So it's 0 0.000236 multiply 929. If I want to get the power for pump in what, I need to use conversion. So one watt is 0 0.737 pound force feet per square. Now I have the power for pump, which is 0.3 watt. So this is a pump that I need. If I have a power input 0.3 watt, I can overcome the frictional losses in the flow due to viscosity. Let's call it a day and next lecture we discuss more about head loss when we have turbulent flow. Okay, have a good rest of the day.